Cape Horn, the southernmost tip of South America, notorious for some of the roughest seas in the world. <laughs> Eight exceptional young adventurers are braving these waters on a demanding expedition. Oh. Got it, effort, Harry. At least you got it in a bowl. Smells so bad. Following in the wake of some of the world's greatest explorers, they're travelling far from civilization to work with endangered animals. The wildlife is completely amazing. The adventurers will be pushed to the very limit as they go to extremes to help the planet. Horrible. It's horrible. Can you just leave me alone? Ah! This is Serious Ocean. Coming up, exploring the undersea world. It's beautiful down there. I love it. I love it a bit. Struggling in the extreme conditions. Oh, body, oh. I want to go. And reaching spectacular new heights. I'm far and beyond like what I thought I could possibly do. Go, 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 go. More effort, more effort, more effort. The Ocean 8 set off just two days ago on their epic voyage. On the cramped boat, cabin fever soon set in. This boat is a nightmare. Sailing into their first ocean swell, most of the team were laid low with seasickness. You feel it? Yeah. Oh, it's painful. It was a gut-wrenching experience, but it actually helped bring the group back together. We all feel like united again. Day three, 7.30 a.m., and expedition leader Ben has to wake the tired team. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. You've had a nice little lie in this morning. No, I'm too tired to get up. The adventurers are still finding it hard coping with a lack of space on board. I can't find my boots either. I've, I've got no boots. Can I get through? I've got some boots. It's really, really hard because everyone's stuff kind of gets mumbled up and then nobody knows where anything is. I understand it. It's just... Difficult and annoying. They haven't quite got it into their heads about how important it is to know where everything is at all times. They'll get there, but it's just adjusting to life in a different place. You put something down and literally it just goes. Today the team will get their first glimpse of the undersea world, as assistant leader Polly explains. We're going to go for a snorkel. <gasps> wow. yes. Obviously, the water is freezing. Oh, you will it's never normal. have experienced oh, yeah. water like this. They'll wear wetsuits to help keep them warm, if they can actually get into them. I'm going to do your best. <laughs> I feel really melodramatic, but it's really choking me. I know. Right. I guess you're all acclimatised now. Each adventurer also needs a snorkel and flippers. Don't try and walk around in them, because you'll be flat on your face. <laughs> the water is just a couple of degrees above freezing, so even in wetsuits, they'll only have around half an hour to explore. It's absolutely awesome. I mean, down there, it's completely silent and kind of airy as well. It's, re it's really weird. It's completely different. It's such an amazing experience. I love it so much. It's just the best. And they find the ice cold waters full of marine life. I've got a starfish, but you have to dive down to get it. And it's really scary diving down in all the like reed bits. Katie discovers one of the more unusual local creatures. I found a crab! <laughs> it's like some mad little devil thing. We've got a centoya, which is a king crab. Um, believe it or not, this is a baby. They grow to probably about ten times this size, and they're a real delicacy to eat here. It's really spiky. It sting to me. Look at it! It's my crabby! Look at it move! Guys, look at the crumb! As the team approach their maximum time in the water, 
they all start to suffer the effects of the extreme cold. I feel very sick and really cold and really weak. <laughs> and I can't get this annoying thing off. But I'm happy that I got to see a starfish over there. And that was it. And those are jellyfishes. And I can't speak properly because of this. My hands are hurting of coldness. They're so cold, but they're, they're really hurting. My fingers and my toes are so, so cold, and it's starting to go blue at the tips, which is quite worrying. This was just absolutely fantastic. Cold, but fantastic. Just about getting the colour back in my hands. Back on board their yacht Valhalla, it's not long before they're at each other's throats once again. You know, it's not big or anything, it's just like, oh, you ginger, this, this Scottish people smile, what sort of question is that? Everyone's just getting on at me for being Scottish and stuff and being ginger. And I've just, I've just got really upset about it there because they, they were just laughing that I was getting upset about it. And it really, I really hate it and it's not, it's not funny. You know, you're just completely senseless. Stacey, you need to calm down. You're shouting absolutely everyone for nothing. She's in ginger. I'm not getting on here for me, Well, that's what he's been doing all the time. Yeah, he's a really offend and he's just joking. Same if you take me you think that things don't offend people, but they actually do and really do. We understand that small things like that, especially in this sort of circumstance, can, can really offend people and can really hurt them. And you don't really think about the consequences of what you're saying because it's just not something that you'd get offended by. But I realise now that what I was doing was a bit insensitive, so I'm going to stop at least, and I hope other people will as well. Whatever their good intentions, Living on the boat in such a small space seems destined to cause conflict. I'm not doing the washing up. Why? Because yesterday I didn't get my, uh, my hands froze. I'm just doing it for reason. I refuse to do it. Sybil's point blank refusal to wash up sparks the next onboard bust up. Why has she got like some sort of phobia of washing up? We're going to have another pathetic argument, aren't we? Sybil, will you do some washing up? No! Chill She's just finding something to moan about so she doesn't have to do anything. Can you please leave me alone? I am! I'm trying to fix my bed up. Can you just leave me alone? Sybil is in no mood to compromise and her fiery temper isn't helping. You kept demanding stuff from me, saying, oh, come and dry up the plates and stuff, and I was really getting annoyed because they kept saying it. And I was trying to, in the middle of something else, and when you keep saying stuff to my ears, it really gets to my nerves. So I just blow up, which is what I usually do, blow up. The leaders are concerned that her attitude is affecting team morale. Sybil, for me, is the one person that I feel has kind of let me down and let herself down so far because she's not integrating uh, and she's not giving it her all um, and that is a big worry because in a confined space it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better unless she wants to do something about it. The team are continuing their journey down the historic Magellan Strait. Today they have a voyage of just 25 miles, about a three hour sail before they spend their first night camping ashore. The young adventurers are sailing in the wake of the great Portuguese explorer, Ferdinand Magellan, who almost 500 years ago led what many believe was the greatest voyage discovery in human history. At that time, much of the globe wasn't mapped and there was no known route to sail from the mighty Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. With staggering courage, Magellan discovered a way through, the passage now known as the Magellan Strait and his expedition was the first to sail all the way around the globe. Now the Sirius Ocean team will relive a key moment in the discovery of the strait. Local legend has it that as Magellan sailed the uncharted waters, he sent his men up a mountain to see if the route might lead to the Pacific. 500 years on, the adventurers will try to scale the same peak, almost a thousand meters high, looking really, really remote and steep. This looks really quite adventurous. It's the first big physical challenge of the trip, and Harry's not at his best. It's a bit cold and a bit hot. Mm. 
Guys, 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 guys. It's not a race. Just take your time. I don't want to see twisted ankles or anything else slipping over these rocks. Tonight, they've got a climb of just 100 metres to set up a base camp. But in the heavy undergrowth, the going is tough. I was just falling everywhere because the heather's just so soft to me. It must be really nice to walk up, but see if you've got a bag on, it's horrible. It goes fairly fast after this. Right, just wait, just wait, Connor, please. It was kind of annoying a little bit with Connor because it, it, it feels almost like he's trying to prove that he's the alpha male, that he can get up the hill the fastest. And nobody else is joining in this competition, it's just him. Is your big thing that you can onto you? Yeah, cool. He's charging up his mountain and then going, come on, Robin, come on, Katie, come on, Callum, even though Callum's right behind him. Just keep rolling over and Connor just keeps shouting at me and it's like, I can't do it. I'm not shouting at you. You do. <laughs> Wow. This is something else, and this is an achievement if I get up this thing, because I am in pain. I promise it's not far now. Go on, drive up on that right leg. Well done! We have arrived! It's been just a short taster of what's to come tomorrow, and Harry has found it exhausting. Honestly? It is Terrible. <laughs> Absolutely. Pretty. Terrible. As they search for a site to pitch their tents, they find the ground covered in what looks like green gunge. Oh! It's prehistoric slime. Oh! Just try and find somewhere relatively flat and not, not here, and not and not too boggy. Okay, there'll be lumps and bumps, but hey, that's the way it is. We're in the mountains. With night falling, they need to get their tents up fast. The tent owner's manual. Right, instructions. <laughs> Everyone does that. Honey, <laughs> mate, I'm not being funny, but we just want to get this up. Yeah. We got about ten minutes till dark. Connor is in his element, and the boys' tent is going up in record time. But this, this bit is right, honestly. I know no, no, that is that's not it right. Watch. Seriously, you remember it? There's cliffs on the front. Oh yeah, it could be right actually. And then yeah, we wait. Yeah. And that is then where does the bendy come? That's from? right. That comes over the middle to hold the middle in place. Harry clip these on. Connor is right. Brilliant. Connor's always right. <laughs> Connor's never right, right to be honest. <laughs> in contrast, the girls are struggling badly. Okay. Just look at the boys. They're out carrying the tent. Uh, it's just a real downer because we can't do it. We're really not very good. We can do, can it, do it, Katie. They're getting particularly frustrated with Sybil. One there. One there. I think you can probably Sybil, please stop just standing around. I'm not just standing around. Okay. Can you shush? Yeah, it's not going particularly well. Everyone's arguing. I want to go at Sybil because she doesn't really pull her weight as much as I really think she should be. Right, Sybil, do you want to do something? I gave up trying because I feel really, really dizzy and sick. And people are telling me, like, do this, do that, do this, do that. It really is annoying. It was all just moan, moan, moan. Poor old Sybil. And, you know, she's just, she put no effort into that tent thing. She can't get her head over that everyone else has experienced exactly the same problems as her. Even when the camp is finally completed, spirits continue to sink. That was my teeth and then it's something picked up before. I can't brush my teeth with that. Someone shot my sleeping bag in the muck over there when my sleeping bag's meant to be in my bag. How did we get out there? It's really depressing. I can't get up without brushing my teeth. It's so funny, that I am. I'm fed up with an unmissing home. I just... It all seems a bit too much. I'm the worst day in the world. <laughs> And I have to stop. And I promised myself I wasn't going to cry, but these people are really getting on my nerves. I want to be home. I just want to be home. Go on, check your sleeping bag in. As they try to make themselves comfortable for the cold night out, Connor decides he's not going to bother with a sleeping bag. I'm just going to sleep in my clothes because I can't get in the sleeping bag. You, you're being an idiot. Why? Yeah, get in a sleeping bag. You will freeze, all right? Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no. No, absolutely no way. Yeah. 
It's just reparking it in the morning. No, I'm the sorry. No, 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 Connor, please. Yeah. No, I've done this for years. I know what I'm talking about. Just get a sleeping bag out. It's being lazy. <laughs> The day of the big climb dawns, ice cold and windy. Right, it's 10 to 6, all right, girls. Rise and shine. Morning, morning, morning. I'm too tired. We got some sleep last night, but I really don't think it was enough. So I think it's going to be a real struggle today. I'm really tired. I was first sleeping on the boat. It's cold. It's freezing cold up here. Having left the relative luxury of the boat, the team are faced with mountain rations. Just get down your neck, David, because any neck is good. And oh, it's good for digestion. It's really good porridge. I like it. It's good stuff. Oh. Holly, I can't, I can't eat this. I'm just feeling sick. I can't, I can't eat it. No, actually, it makes me want to throw up. That's quality porridge, though. Suddenly, out in the Magellan Strait, something catches their eye. There. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's right, right, right. Oh, yeah, hey, okay. Yeah, hey, yeah. Yeah. They've spotted a humpback whale. Just focus wow. on that spot and you'll see, and it comes up, you'll see the blowhole first and it's breaching. Absolutely massive. As you see it, it's been tail. Yeah. 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 These waters are renowned for their wildlife. And before the big climb, Ben and Polly gather the team for a surprise announcement. Got a bit of a, a treat for somebody. That is to go off scuba diving, all right? And that's going to be scuba diving in the Straits of Magellan, all right? So that is a bit of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Who that person is going to be is totally up to you, OK? Each adventurer will have to vote for who they think most deserves the experience, though Callum, Charlotte and Harry are ruled out, as they've had asthma in the past. I vote for Robin. Vote for Robin? Yeah. Okay. Why? Because she's been really, really nice to me the whole trip. I vote for Robin. Why? Just because I always feel like if anyone's ever upset, she's the first one to be there to help them and to make them feel better about themselves. Okay, I'm going to vote for David because he was on the ship and he was just chucking up so badly. But even though he's been the most sick out of everybody, I think he's been the one that's been sort of least complaining about it. Can I vote for Robin because I think that out of everyone, she's the one who's been least argumentative about everything. I want to vote for Robin. It quickly becomes a one-horse race. I'm all for Robin as well. All seven of Robin's teammates vote for her. You're going to go for Robin as well. Good on you guys. Robin, looks like you're going. it looks like you're going diving. Hey. How does that feel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you slightly scared? No, I'm really no. excited. Right, there is a little twist in the tale because actually... We, we told you a little porky, there's actually two spots to go scuba diving. And so the person that got the next amount of votes, which is David, you're going to be hey. going diving today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. No, he, he doesn't want to go. <laughs> Always did it look happy. <laughs> what is wrong with me? What are you doing? I, I'm so happy. I mean, I, I can't wait to get out there. Oh, I, I don't know why I'm crying every time I'm happy, but it's so, oh, I just really, really can't wait. It's such an amazing thing. I've wanted to do it for so long. I'm getting a chance to do it in like one of the most beautiful places, the best place for diving. Oh, yeah, have a brilliant oh, time. Have a brilliant time. Oh, yeah. Winning the treat means missing the day's big climb, which will now be tackled by just six adventurers. I think it's going to be a tough day, to be honest. I am worried, and I, can't, I actually can't wait to climb it so we can go back to the boat because I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired. But as usual, Connor isn't at all intimidated by the huge challenge ahead. It's not, it's not too high. Like, with all the kit now, we should get up there in about 20 minutes. Come on then, let's get going. It'll be amazing. When we get to the top, it'll be phenomenal, all right? The team set off in the legendary 500-year-old footsteps of Magellan's men. Give us your hand. The climb is nearly a thousand metres and the leaders have allowed most of the day to get to the top and back down. But the idea is just to keep going, but just really slow. Just try and regulate your breathing, alright? And that's difficult. It's not long before Harry starts to struggle. His slow pace frustrates the rest of the team. 
You keep having to stop and wait. Yeah. And down with it's that. slow going, so this might take a while, that's all. How are you for I can't get home. Use your hands. Use your hands, Rock, to the call, please. I'm fine. I really enjoy things like this. I just hate them always stopping and starting because it really hurts my legs when I go two steps and then just stop. It's really starting to annoy me now. I know you're finding it hard. Yeah. yeah. How's the breathing? All right. Sybil is also keen to get the experience over as quickly as possible. It's hard for me to breathe a little bit, but I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get off that mountain and get back on the boat and get some more. Out! Meanwhile, in a very choppy Magellan Strait, the dive team are having quite a ride. I don't feel sick at all. I'm, I'm scared. This is mental, this is. I mean, we're rocking from side to side. We're literally falling into the water. They head to a much more sheltered bay for the dive itself. But before they go in, there's a lot to learn. Are you OK? And if you are, you signal back. I'm OK. I can't wait. My butterflies, I've got butterflies. I'm so excited. I really can't wait to get in there and see what I can see and get right in there and move right down. I just really can't wait. I'm shaking so much. Ridiculously excited. I mean, it's our first dive, so I'm a bit, a bit scary, a bit daunting, but I'm just so, so excited about being able to do it. Back on Magellan's mountain, the climbers are two hours into their ascent. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I'm round and then yeah, because there's only Why a gentle Are we not supposed to be heading that way? Yeah, but if we go over that, there's all them rocks there. We could just go straight across it. Yeah, and look. Can you see you are? Once again, Connor is irritating the group by racing off in front. No, you really are rushing ahead. Are you okay, Whatever, okay? if you go a bit slower. Let's take a bit think. Let's take it slow, Connor. You think as you're going over the hill. Yeah, can we take it slow? You know See here, Connor. Yeah. Just wait, stop walking. You don't, you, See, you what, if you go right, there's a, just a gentle slope there. Yeah. We can either go up there or up here. Can you just tell me which oh. way you're going? One, two, this one or, or that one? That one. I'd rather you go for the right-hand option if, if that's all right. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Purely really because it just looks very steep at the top of that bit. As Ben discusses the route, Connor takes the opportunity to run off into the distance yet again. Yeah, no, no, what are you doing it already? I'm checking something. Stop. His teammates have had enough. They decide it's time to clip his wings. I don't know what it is. He just can't help himself get into the front. I think it's his little alpha male status. So we've vanished him to the back. It's fine, thank you. What are you up then? I'm not hurrying up. Just going now at the back. But it doesn't take long before he's clashing with Katie at the rear of the line. Yeah, you're just annoying me at the back, to be honest. Yeah, you just go to the front, please. <laughs> He said, then, go, go to the back, so I went to the back, and Katie went, you don't know me. Go to the front, so I went to the front, Callum goes, well, I'll find you at the back, so I went back to the back, and she goes, go back to the front. So I'm sort of, I don't know where I am now. I think you should be positioned slap bang in the middle, and you have to stay there. At the dive site, David will be the first to put his new skills to the test. But almost immediately, he has a problem. His ears are giving him terrible pain. He heads back to the surface to see expedition doctor Antonia. It's just the pressure of the water. We'll maybe get you out and we'll go have a just check inside your ears when I go to the toilet, OK? Go come sit down. He started hurting so much and they still do. It's literally like someone pushing her head in. Oh. Ear pain is one of the most common problems for scuba divers, caused by the increasing pressure of the water the deeper they dive. I'm really disappointed that I'd really like to try again a lot, but I mean, not right now. It's just gave me, it's giving me a really bad headache. Oh. The higher they climb up the mountain, the more stunning the scenery, and the more Sybil's spirits are lifted. I'm feeling very happy now, and it's really easy now. It's no longer that cold. This is really cool. Like, you see the view? It's really beautiful. 
The terrain is getting steep and treacherous. I'll do it. I'll do it. Whoa! But Harry is digging deep to keep going. Use the edges of your boots, all right? Right, I'm just going to... I couldn't find a foothold in some places, so it was quite hard, but I've done it. I'm only a few. It's not that, it's not that much now to um, the summit. David can only watch as Robin gets her first full dive. The undersea world is breathtaking. Among the sea life she encounters is a huge mass of pink jellyfish. some crabs and starfish and loads of fish and some shells and seaweed, loads of seaweed. It's just beautiful down there. It's really relaxing. I love it. I love it to bits. Up on the mountain, the team have reached the snow line. It's not a thing! No! I'm coming! No! It'll take just one final push through the spectacular snow fields to reach the summit. Goes as soon as he's ready. And after a five hour climb, all six adventurers make it. We're at the top. That's zero to two and a half thousand feet. So it's fantastic. Like Magellan's men all those years ago, they can clearly see that the strait leads to the Pacific Ocean in the distance. You can see why they came up here, because you, you really can see everywhere from here. So it's really amazing to be up here, to be honest. 500 years, we're like one of the only people to come back here. And not many people now are going to come back here anyway. It's so hard to get to. It's mind-blowing. I feel really, really happy that I did it, because I know I've accomplished it, because I really feel like giving up. It feels absolutely amazing being up here. But I've always wanted to climb a mountain, and now I really have. I've stretched my limits, really. I've gone far and beyond like what I thought I could possibly do. Next time on Serious Ocean, napping on Nightwatch. <laughs> Close encounters with elephant seals. A fantastic experience, 10 out of 10. And high emotions on the high seas. You just realise how far away you are.